can't see it all actually when he closes it. So well, it's all about awareness and, and feel for the game. Sometimes in a game, you're going to need a split second because defenders are flying at you or coming at you. So you got to be able to use your eyes and tell your body where you wanted to go or tell the ball where you, want, you wanted to go. So it's beneficial for sure. Closed eyes, open eyes. It just makes him have to adjust really quickly and react to whenever he can see. When I was a little kid, I used to dribble in the dark. A lot of times when players train, they're always staring at the rim, and so they get overly focused on the rim, where in the game they only see the rim for split seconds. So if I can take away his vision and turn it back on, it teaches his brain, his eyes, to adjust quickly when he's shooting, adjust his range, adjust his touch. Now, you still, you still make your same footwork, right? So don't just shoot wherever your feet are. You didn't say that. But play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then do the cross and then shoot it. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, don't do the cross. If you're already in the drop, step into your shot. Okay. Like how you normally would. A lot of times during game enhancement training, the common way that players will simulate the game is through actually having defenders. A lot of times that's what we call dummy defense. Now the reason why I don't necessarily look at the game in game situations or use dummy defense very often as a skill enhancement trainer is because I actually want to look at different parts of a player's skill. See if I put you in a game situation, you're typically going to do whatever you already do. Whatever your style of the game is, whatever your abilities and habits are, you're going to naturally go towards those things. And even if I have a dummy defender, you're still going to want to lean towards what you already naturally do. So when I can remove you from the context of the game, taking defenders out of the picture and literally take the game out of the picture, I'm actually able to test your real skills and your current abilities. We can get a little too caught up sometimes in whether what the defender's doing. I don't necessarily care about defender reads. I want to make sure that your body can handle reads. So your hand's in a position where you can literally make decisions. Go, cross, shoot. So when I give you these types of reactions, they're artificial reactions, but they're designed to show your body, can it possibly make those decisions or not? Because defender reads are going to change based on your personality as a player, your style as a player. There's not right and wrong answers. But if your hand's not in the right position, you can't read, you can't react. So obviously in the game, things are gonna be a little bit more fluid and quick, but what I, all I want you to th think about right now is, is my body in a position where I can actually do whatever is required of me? That's all we're training for right now is that technique and that skill. Oftentimes you'll see us do color reads. Now it could be uh, uh, two different color tennis balls, it could be two color med balls, or it could be something as simple as two different color cones. Maybe a red cone, maybe a white cone. Now let's take a drill that's very commonly done, that the angle cone drill where a coach will have you do between the legs one dribble, between the legs one dribble all the way down. Now you might be doing multiple moves there, however you're just doing the same move over and over. Now if I do a simple task at the red cone, give me a between the legs, at the white cone, give me behind the back. Now for a player's processing ability, 
Now I have them multitasking multiple different things from a brain aspect. Now, that might seem like a simple task to some players. Give me between the legs at this one, give me behind the back here. However, for others, now I have their head having to think one total step ahead of each other because they have multiple different moves to think about. That's what for a lot of players unlocks the ability to slow the game down. Now I have their brain processing multiple steps ahead of itself where they still have to be able to think clean. What you'll watch with a lot of players is everything gets jumbled up there. They'll mush everything together and they'll no, never fully really get through the aspect that we're trying to get them to, which is being able to mentally break down each step while still usually trying to perform rather quickly. That's when the game really starts to slow down for a lot of players is when they actually start to process slower while their body is still able to operate quickly. And so actually what I wanna do a lot of time from a skill enhancement perspective and why a lot of times people can't use their imagination properly to see what we're actually doing is because I am very strategically removing the context of the game to test a particular footwork or skill. For instance, a very common one we would use is what we call color reads. So you're reading the color, red is right, left is black, and I'm doing it during your touch. I'm only giving you a split second to read it. So look, I'm always taking your reads outside the context of the game, because I don't want you always thinking about what the defender is doing. I want your feet to be able to execute directions based on reactions. I might toss a ball up that's red or toss a ball up that's green. And if I simply let you know that you're gonna drive right on this read and drive left on this read, I've removed the context of the game and simply am testing your ability to perform whatever moves we're asking of you or whatever reaction we're asking of you. I don't need you to picture everything as a defender. I simply need to see how well you respond right and left because now I'm able to really test the skills that are there without overcomplicating it with defense or with reads that you want to make based on your current game. So by removing the context of the game, we're able to completely change the focus away from who you are as a player and who you are in your skill set. I'm going over inverted split pivots with my footwork right now, but I'm doing it with my eyes closed um, and then trying to read and react and find the rim. Uh, when he opens my eyes, he controls it from his phone, so. Color reads can be a really great way to get a player to mentally enhance their ability to slow down and process smoother while their body is still performing fast. So giving a player that other extra aspect of whether this is red, this is white, that part doesn't matter that much. But what matters is we're giving them two separate different tasks for them to have to read. Now, something like a tennis ball toss could be a little bit quicker, where even having placed cones of reds and whites or placed med balls of blacks and reds having to get them to think that extra step ahead of themselves without losing their footwork, without losing their skill, that's when you can take training to another level because you're giving the player an extra task that they have to be able to mentally complete and an extra skill that they've got to think about along the way. So to really boost that training ability, I want to be able to give players those color reads to make them to have to think more, but also be able to think slower as their body operates quickly. What's up guys, Bryce Stanhope here with IPT. Make sure you're clicking onto that subscribe button. And then obviously, turn those post notifications on so you're one of the first to get our videos. And then if you wanna see more videos, you can click here, or you could even click over here. So make sure, follow along, engage in those comment sections. Let us know what you would like to see from us so we can give you any help that we possibly could through IPT.